Have you heard about Grok? Not this one, but this one with a Q. Yes, this Grok has the fastest infant speed of all the other cloud providers at the moment in the market. And to demonstrate the speed of Grok, today we will build a streaming application using the Grok API. And in this process as well, you'll be able to build this application for yourself and share it with everybody else or use it for your own purposes. So let's get started. Before we jump into the demo itself, if you've never heard of Streamit, because this is the platform we will be using or the framework that we'll be using to build this application, just go to streamit.io and you'll see it here. So Streamit is a fast way of building uh, data apps using Python. So if you're not familiar with things like React or JavaScript for building front ends, and you just know Python or you just prefer Python, you can just build Python apps that you can share and interact with just with Python using Streamlit. And here's an example, as you can see on the screen, you just do import Streamlit and you write your first, you know, write hello and it shows you your application right there. So that's just in a simple explanation of Streamlit. If you, if you don't know about Streamlit, just do that. Pip install Streamlit and you get Streamlit right there. And uh, it's very flexible and very uh, customizable to you, your needs really. And uh, it's really cool. I like using it. So. That's out of the way. So let's go to Grok. So go to navigate to console.grok.com uh, slash docs quick start. And as you can see here from the quick start, we'll need a few things to get started with our demo here. So we'll need an API key from Grok. And right now, as far as I can tell, the APIs are free. Jump on there is free access. Use it. I'm sure they're going to close it down and let us pay after a while. But at the moment, it's free. So please use it. And you want to go to the API key section here. And the first thing you want to do is create an API key. And I have a few here. I'm going to use this one, but I should just show you how to create one. So you can do, just give it a, a name. So in my case, I'll do demo and copy it and just make sure that once you copy it, um, put it somewhere because it's going to get, what if you lose it, you have to create a new one because you can come back and see it. As you can see, you can't do anything. Even this edit, you just edit the name, but not the API key itself. So in this case, I'll just delete that one. And I'll leave this test one, which I'll be using. And this one is for the deployed application that I already have de deployed. So let's go back to the documentation and continue the process. So the first things we want to do is there's export. You need to export your API key and install Grok. And then here's just a boilerplate example of how you need to structure the, the call to the application. So that it has the open AI compatibility, uh, which basically means Kind of open AI kind of set the standards of how you call the LLM to respond to you. And this is exactly what they're using. So it's pretty standardized really at the moment. So this is really cool, but the easiest, I'll show you the easiest way that I usually try to get, uh, if they have a playground and they do have a playground, this is the page where I usually just customize the model. And then I see the code of how the model looks like. So if you click up here at view code, you'll see the code that kind of is running that application right there. And as you can see, we just have this Grok client and client uh, chat application, create mixed draw model and all that. So this is pretty cool. It kind of gives me a rough boiler, boilerplate that I want to start with. So I usually copy that and put it in my IDE, which is uh, VS code in this case. All right, so now we're in VS code. So the first thing you want to do is since we got the API key from Grok, you want to store that somewhere first. And with Streamit, we're going to use Streamit secrets to manage that secret. So that way we, uh, it's easy to manage. So the first thing you want to do is create a folder dot Streamit. And within that folder that stream it, create another file called secrets.toml, toml in this case. And within that, save your API key that you created uh, on the Grok website and put it here. And under, so Grok API key equals to, and then do the uh, quotation marks and put the API key between there. So we'll need that later. And then create stream it underscore app or just name it whatever you want to name it for your application.py. And in this case, this will be the code. Just the boilerplate that we got from uh, Grok's website, copy that, put it here, or you can follow along and uh, use mine in, in this case because I've customized mine a bit here. So I'm not going to do real life coding here. I'm just going to show you what I've already built. I'll walk you through my code. And you need to create a requirements file, which is Grok and Streamit. When you deploy this application later, you'll use the Grok and Streamit to be able to, uh, Streamit will be able to identify this file in your GitHub and be able to pull this uh, modules and install them uh, in your application that you deploy in Streamlit. And I have a README, which is just, it's always good to have that to guide people when they come to your repository to see what uh, or how they can use your repository code. And one of the important things you should have a 
git-ignore. So basically when you're committing this uh, code to GitHub, it will ignore anything that you put within the git-ignore. So these are important stuff that you don't want them to go to your GitHub so that everybody can see them. So my first one here, I have a stream without secret. So definitely you don't want to send your API key to GitHub. You don't want everybody to see your API key. Uh, they will end up using it, rack up charges on your, on your account. It's always not a nice thing to do. And there's a virtual environment that I created here so that I can have all my modules within one sandbox. And I'll, I have a lot of videos on uh, creating virtual environments. So please check some of them on my channel. And once you have that ready, go back to Streamlit application. So the first thing walking you down through this code base, uh, I import a Streamlit here, a Streamlit, and then I import a uh, generator, which we'll need later for the streaming process so that you can see the, the, the responses from the model coming in in a streaming fashion. And we import a Grok uh, from that. And then this first line here, set page config, basically what we're doing here, we're just setting the page name, uh, the title at the top of the page when you see on the bar uh, or on the tab itself, you see the name of the application. I named it as Grog Goes Burr um, because of the speed, duh. But you can name it whatever you want to name. I have the page icon, layout, uh, you understand that. So the next one is a icon, which is basically what will be, it looked like one of those uh, Notion style uh, page icons on the application just for styling purposes. And then I'm calling that function right here and putting a race car as my uh, icon, which is pretty cool, I think. Uh, the next thing is a subheader. I'm giving it the header for the application and giving it the writer. And then from here, I'm setting the API key for Grok. So the way you call it on Streamit is we're using Grok, we're calling Grok, and then we're passing the API key for Grok. And with Streamit, you use ST secrets, and that will call the the secret API key here from this file, and we'll call it and use it in this application. So it's pretty nice. And I'm also initializing the chat history and this will save the model and will save the messages. That way you're able to chat with the same model and you'll see the messages as they come as well. So that way it doesn't disappear uh, after each run. Uh, the next thing I'm defining the models and where I usually go to get this, and this is for your knowledge for future, uh, whenever you have this code and you want to update it, you can come to their, they have a Grok Discord channel. And if you come to the Grok Discord channel and go to models, this is where they update the models uh, that they get in, integrated within Grok. So right now they have Llama 2, they have Mixtrawl, and they have uh, the Gemma from Google. And if they add some more, they'll add it down here. So cool nifty thing that I use there. Uh, but I'm putting it as a in a dictionary, so that way I'm able to call it down here. Um, and as you can see, I have two columns. The first column, I'm just adding the model option. I'm just giving the, uh, the user option for them to be able to choose the option for the model what they want to use uh, from these three. And then I'm also putting the max tokens for that model that they pick. So that way it's automatic and you don't have to worry about that. Um, you can just reduce it, but it gives you the max. And then I'm saving that in session state. I'm able to clear the session state for each of those models. When you switch to a different model, you do not see the chats from the previous model. So uh, that cleans that out. And also the next column now, uh, I have a slider, which is the max tokens, uh, as I mentioned before. And then I'm displaying the chat from or the messages from the history of the application when you rerun the application. So that's a pretty nifty thing to do. And then, like I mentioned, this is the generate chat response. This will using the generator that we imported at the top. And this basically just kind of goes over or iterates over the chunks that's coming in from the, from the responses from the model and it's lining them up. So that way they are uh, streaming within the application and you're not waiting for the entire thing to generate before it shows you the full output, um, which is pretty nice. And then, so here we're just asking the user to enter prompts and they'll type whatever the question is and then they'll submit. And once they submit, and it also has an avatar, which is pretty cool. And you can able to tell this is the user, this is the model. And the, for the model, it's like a bot thing, uh, emoji. And so once you type in, it shows you, it runs the model. And this is where the model is fetching response from the Grok API. And so I put the try and uh, and exceptions here and it's always nice so that way if there's an error when we do send the question to the api then we're able to get a full response that we're able to understand and debug and fix our application so that's always nice and also i'm passing those messages to the session state so that way it stays in session state and let's see and almost and you have to make sure that you put the stream as true so that way it streams and it's not you just want to waiting for the full response and then uh, as we get to the end here, we have the generator. We're passing the response that we get from the model. We're putting it through the generator using the app, 
the, the function that we created above, uh, we're putting it into chat response. And then we get in the full response and we're writing it to the screen so that uh, the user can see the streaming response of what they asked the question for. And if there's an error, they'll show us the error and give us a quick explanation of what, it, what the error is about. And then here we're just appending the message, the final message that we got from the, from the model to the session state. So that way when we print it out, we can see the previous conversations that we've had uh, with the model. And then and this is just within that session, just to be clear. And then if not, you know, if maybe the output is a, it's not a string, uh, it's, it's gonna, we're gonna handle it down here with a different way to join it and still pass it to the, we try to basically put it in session state if it's not even a string. Now that we have our code ready, let's run it and see the application in action. So what you usually do is stream it, you do stream it run, and then the name of the application or the name of the file that you named where you put your code. And as you can see here, we have our application running the three different types of models that we already had in our code. So we have Mixtra, we have Llama 2, and then we have Gemma from Google. Um, and then we also have this Max tokens. And one thing you should note is well, as you change the model, as you can see this one for Mixtra is uh, 32,000, I think, uh, 768 tokens, Max tokens. And as we switch to 70B, it's definitely changes based on the model, uh, which is really neat, which is part of our code. So that's pretty nifty. So let's start with mixed draw and let's ask it a question. As you can come here, let's just ask it, a, what is life? Let's see how fast it answers. And as you can see, it's really fast and you can see it's streaming. It's no waiting for us to, I guess it's no waiting to finish the full response before it responds to us. So let's ask it again, create a table of comparison all super superheroes all right let's see all right so it did that and that's pretty fast right um compared to chat gpt which i think would be much slower let's just do chat gpt let's give it the same question that we gave it um create a table of all superheroes and you can see that did really fast so let's come to chat gpt um see that's i mean it's taking forever right so he's talking about all this stuff before he even creates a table. So that's already taken a long time. We're still rolling. Um, anyway, we don't want to wait for that for too long. So as you can see, it did pretty good. It did answer a lot of good questions here. Let's ask it more questions, right? So uh, the raddest jokes. All right. So you got some jokes here. Why did the scare squirrel win? Uh, why did the scarecrow win on a word? Because he was outstanding in the field. All right. All right. Why did the bicycle fall over? Because it was too tired. Huh. <laughs> You're actually funny, Grok. All right. Not Grok, really. Mixed raw in this case. Um, why did the tomato, 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 whatever, uh, turn red? Because it's so salad dressing. All right, cheeky. Why did the hipster burn his tongue? He drank his coffee before he was cool. <laughs> All right. Why did the chicken go to the CNs? What is even CN? What is CNs? Uh, to talk to the other side. English is not my first language. So I'm going to have to look this up. What is... All right. A mediumistic practice in which people gather to receive messages from spirits. Okay. Something like that. Makes sense. All right. To the other side. Okay. Makes sense. Why did the golfer bring two pair of pants in, in case he got a hole in one? Huh. All right. Why can the bicycle stand up by itself? It was too tired. Okay, I think it repeated itself a little bit, right? Yeah. Um, why did the computer go to the doctor? It had a virus. All right. Why did the chicken go to therapy? It had some poultry issues with to work out. Hmm. All right. All right. Yeah, it did make me smile. Thank you. So you can see it's really fast and it's really cool to make this stuff. And it's, you know, if you want to take it even to the next level, you can deploy this application and share with people to use. And I've already deployed one, but if you are building this and you're wondering how to deploy it, as you can see here on the top right corner, you can cl just click deploy and it gives you two options, right? So you can do custom deployment. You can deploy it on your own hardware um, or cloud service. And then you also have just deploying a streaming cloud and the streaming cloud is for the community. It's free. Uh, and, and you know, you, you can deploy unlimited public applications for free. You only have one private application that you can deploy so that, you know, you're going to keep it closed. Um, and 
apps are going to be discovered, but they also get indexed by Google. So that's another really cool thing. So if you click deploy now, it'll take you to this page where you can log in with your Google account. From here, it's just taken in from the repository. It's going to create a repository. I have the main file and app URL. You can put the app URL. You can put your domain name that you want to put here. So you can put something funny, but I don't want to do this again because I've already done before. And I'm, so I'm just going to show you my app that I already created and I call, I named it, um, rocks, rock demo streamer app. And as you can see, it's already deployed and you can go to this application link and I can share this with anybody and they'll be able to interact with this application, whatever they are and play with it on their phones, um, really anywhere they have the connection. So this is really cool. Um, you can build this and share with other folks. And as you can see, they share here, you can share on socials and you click on socials and you can embed it also within your application. If you have another application or you have your blog, you can embed it in there as well. So I also want to share my GitHub repository here. So where you can find all the code that we just went over and you can fork it and play around with it, uh, add more features, make it more better or pull, do some pull requests to give me some suggestions with what you want me to build next. Um, feel free to do that. But if you go to Tony Kip Kim Boy, uh, this is my profile and click on Grok, you, Grok stream a demo and you'll be able to see this and you can uh, follow the instructions down here and also come back to this video for reference. If you end up building something with Grok API and Streamlit, please tag me on it and uh, I'll be happy to retweet, reshare, comment on it. So uh, give more visibility to it. All right, that's a wrap for this video. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy this content and also Please give me your suggestions, your comments, uh, your feedback on this video. And also, if you want me to cover something else, please let me know. And uh, stay tuned for the next videos to come. See ya.